Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In one previous video, we talked about xenobiotic drug metabolism. We talked about how that occurs in the liver, and there's many important enzymes involved, one of which is cytochrome P450. So I'm going to assume you have some knowledge of that, and now we're going to get into drug interactions. But first, let's just do a very brief review of what happens with these drugs. Now, these drugs in this context are called xenobiotics. You might see that. And xenobiotic metabolism is done mainly in the liver, although there are some other organs involved, including the kidneys, parts of the GI tract, and even the nasal mucosa, if the xenobiotic is inhaled. So we're just zooming in here at one part of the liver inside hepatocytes. And what you see here are these green dots. These represent the drug in its active form. So again, when I have this A sub ACT or A active, this is when the drug is active. Right here we have the cytochrome P450 enzyme. We're just showing its active site right here. And remember that generally P450 enzymes either totally inactivate or partially inactivate the drug. They decrease its activity. So when this active form of drug A comes here into the active site, it's chemically modified in some way by the P450. And when we say modified, we're going to just call that A modified. And this is going to represent in red here when the drug is either partially or totally inactivated. Uh, for our purposes here, we can really just think about total inactivation just to make it simple. So basically, active enzyme reacts with the P450 and it becomes inactive. Right? And so what you can see here is as these drugs pass through the liver, more and more of them become inactivated until finally, once they get through the liver, some percentage of drug A has been inactivated, as denoted by these red dots. There are some that are still active, though, and that's green. Eventually, all of drug A here will be totally inactivated and eliminated. Okay, so let's now get into one way that two different drugs, we'll call them drug A and drug B, can interact with each other, and this first method is inhibition. So here's our first example of inhibition. This is going to be competitive inhibition. And again, we have this drug A, which is initially active. It comes into the active site of this P450, and it's chemically modified and becomes inactive. Okay, we saw that before. So we can say that this drug A is a substrate for this particular P450, but there might also be other substrates. We'll call that other substrate drug B. So drug A and drug B are both substrates for this enzyme. And in the same way, when drug B is active, we'll have that as green. And when it's inactive, we'll have that red. So B modified is inactive. And we're going to say that drug B also has the effect of decreasing heart rate. So when you have a lot of drug B that's been taken, it will decrease the patient's heart rate. That's its effect or purpose. Now, we just said that both drugs A and B are substrates for the P450 enzyme. And one way that drug A can interact with drug B is through competitive inhibition. So let's suppose a patient takes a large dose of substrate or drug A, okay? When there's an increased concentration of drug A, there's going to be a lot of that drug A in this active site, right? Because as drug A passes through the liver, again, drug A is going to be metabolized by this enzyme, and so it's going to be in the active site. And if there's more drug A, it's going to be in the active site for a longer period of time because there's more of it. And that A, or drug A, is going to compete for this active site with drug B. So if you look down here, we have an example of what's going on. So there's a lot of drug A, and it's in the active site of this enzyme. But while it's in the active site, drug B cannot get into the active site. Okay, So drug B is not metabolized as much, and so more of it retains its activity, or it remains active. Okay, So when there's more of this substrate, or drug A, there's less metabolism of drug B because B can't get into the active site. A competes for that active site uh, with drug B. And so the concentration of substrate B increases and its biological effects increase. And so what you might expect here, if drug B is given with drug A, 
There's going to be more of drug B because less of it's metabolized, and the heart rate will decrease more because that's its effect. So the patient might actually have a lower heart rate uh, than expected, and we can conclude that A interacts with B. So that was competitive inhibition. Now we have the second type of inhibition, which is suicide or irreversible inhibition. So let me explain how this works. Over here we have drug A again. Okay, drug A is initially active, it comes into the active site, and this P450 enzyme modifies it and inactivates it, or partially inactivates it. But in this reaction, while this drug A is being inactivated, a piece of the molecule of A is covalently attached to an amino acid somewhere in this active site. In other words, the enzyme is covalently modified. So this modification right here, this is just a piece of this molecule A, or drug A, that was transferred from drug A onto an amino acid here in the active site. Now we know that when an amino acid becomes modified in the active site, particularly a critical amino acid, the enzyme becomes inactive. It's basically dead. And this modification is irreversible. It can't just come off. It's stuck like this, so this enzyme is permanently dead. So let's see what happens down here. Again, we have this P450, it's been chemically modified, and we have this active form of drug B. Now, drug B is not going to be able to react with this enzyme because its amino acid has been modified in the active site. So B is not metabolized, and so we're going to see more pronounced biological effects of B. Okay? It can't be metabolized. So we're going to have an artificially higher concentration of drug B, and remember that B's biological effect is to decrease heart rate. So if there's an artificially higher concentration of B, we're going to expect to see more profound decreases in heart rate. Okay? And again, this drug A is interacting with drug B. So those are two mechanisms by which two drugs can interact with each other. Again, both are going to be inhibition, so competitive and irreversible inhibition. But we also have another way that drugs can interact with each other, and this is through induction. Induction is the opposite of inhibition. Let's see how that works. So here I have a cell. This is probably a hepatocyte right here. Here's its nucleus. You can see its DNA in the nucleus. We'll explain all these pieces here in a few minutes. But initially, I have this drug A right here. So the first step here is drug A is simply going to cross the plasma membrane of this hepatocyte. It's going to enter the cell. It's now in the cytoplasm of the cell. And then it's going to bind to this protein called PXR. This stands for pregnane X receptor. Exactly what that is doesn't really matter right now, but a lot of xenobiotics, particularly hydrophobic xenobiotics, can bind to this protein called PXR, pregnane X receptor. And so when this drug binds to PXR, PXR becomes activated. Now you can see there's a host of other proteins right here. This RXR is similar, it's the retinoid X receptor, and then there's a couple co-activators here. Now when this PXR becomes activated through xenobiotic binding, all these other proteins right here basically complex with one another, and they form this transcription factor. Again, you see pregnant X receptor, retinoid X receptor, and these two co-activators form this complex. And when they form that, they can then enter the nucleus. So this is a transcription factor. It comes into the nucleus from the cytoplasm, and you can see it's binding to the DNA at a specific site on the DNA called PXRE. This is the pregnant X response element. Okay, a lot of the genes in this region of the DNA encode cytochrome P450 enzymes or other enzymes involved in xenobiotic metabolism. And so basically, whenever this transcription factor comes over here, binds to the DNA, it activates the transcription of the genes in this segment. And so you get mRNA production. So PXRE, a pregnant X response element, gene upregulation, and you get transcription of that mRNA. And of course, mRNA comes out from the nucleus where it's made out into the cytoplasm. Now, what I want to show you here, these on the right side of the screen, these are cytochrome P450s. Remember that structure I showed a couple slides ago? These are P450s. This is sort of a baseline level of P450s. But now we've got this mRNA that's encoding more of them. And so now we get translation. We get the expression of more cytochrome P450s. Okay? And so in other words, the cytochrome P450s were upregulated. This process is called induction. 
So what we can say is that drug A induced this specific cytochrome P450. Anytime this person intakes this drug, they will get more of these P450s. So hopefully that makes sense. But why does that matter? Because this particular cytochrome P450 is induced by drug A, but it metabolizes drug B. All right, so remember B is a drug that when active decreases the patient's heart rate. And we have this basic setup right here. Here's that P450. B is active initially, it comes into the active site and it's chemically modified and now it's inactive. Okay, so let's look at case one right here. This is just baseline levels of this P450. So just for a concrete example, let's suppose we have a thousand molecules of this drug B and we have this number of cytochrome P450 enzymes. What will happen? Well, some percentage of them will be metabolized and some will not. Okay, so in this case with a thousand molecules of this drug, and this number of P450s, maybe 300 of them were inactivated. That means the other 700 are still activated. Okay, And so we're going to get a decrease in heart rate proportional to the number of active molecules of B. So that's the baseline. This is what happens normally when we don't have drug A. There's no induction. But now what happens if we do take drug A? So this patient take some drug A, and we know that it induces the production of more cytochrome P450. CYP is the gene name. This means cytochrome P450. Well, we're still going to start with a thousand molecules of drug B, but now instead of three of these P450s, now we have nine. That's because drug A induced the production of these. Well, what would happen? Well, if there's more metabolizing enzymes, right, we're going to have more of drug B that's metabolized. So maybe this time, instead of 300 being inactivated, 900 are going to be inactivated. That means 100 will not be. So what you see here is when the patient takes drug B, there's a difference in its metabolism based on whether the patient also takes drug A. Without drug A, only 300 of the molecules of drug B are metabolized. But with drug A, after induction, 900 of molecules of drug B are metabolized. And so here we can certainly say that drug A interacts with drug B. And the question is, how does the heart rate response to drug therapy differ in each case? Well, we look at the number of active molecules of B. In baseline, there's 700. In case two, with induction, there's only 100. And so after induction by drug A, the concentration of drug B is much lower. That is the active concentration. And so the patient's heart rate is going to be higher because there's a smaller decrease in heart rate because drug B, more of it has been inactivated with induction of this P450, okay? So this is a second way that two drugs can interact with each other. Drug A, for example, can induce the production of more cytochrome P450s that means that drug B will be metabolized more and there will be less activity of drug B than we might expect. And so when drugs are being administered, we have to watch out for this induction effect and also the inhibition effects, both irreversible and competitive. So hopefully this video made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.